Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 27. In this tutorial we're going to move away from this level we've been designing so far and we're going to start creating a main menu. So we're going to look at more UI elements including buttons as well as linking some scenes together. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else about game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So we've dealt with scenes before and we've got um, a couple somewhere here, haven't we? So we've got the level 001 uh, and level recycle and obviously the sample scene is what comes with Unity anyway, so we don't need to worry about that one. Uh, and in file and build settings, if you remember, we have set these couple of scenes and sample scene there. Uh, we'll probably actually use that scene itself at some point, uh, given that it's already a scene for us. but for now, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, but what we're going to do is create that main menu. And I want to create it in a similar style as the actual uh, game itself from many, many years ago. So firstly, let's go File and New Scene. So we don't really need to deal with anything three-dimensional, as it were, in this scene, because it's mainly going to be UI-based. So <clears throat> by that standard, what we're going to do is go to Game Object, UI, and let's just go with Raw Image, because... The, if, if you know the game well, you'll know that the title scene is red. <laughs> There's not much more to it, so I'm going to aim for that. But I'm going to tell you how you can do different things uh, as you go along. For example, you could create an entire scene here and just have a camera pan around. Uh, and that could just be like a almost like a cut scene, but it, 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 you don't interact with it in any way apart from selecting new game, load game, whatever. Uh, I do have a couple of tutorials on creating main menus in different ways, so it's entirely up to you if you want to go with one of them. If you search on my channel for main menu, you'll find a couple of different tutorials. So let's go with the whole red theme that it's got going on. And you can see I'm, I'm really just being as simple as possible here. So I'm just going to stretch this, zero, 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 zero. The red is a bit red, so I'm going to tone that down just a little bit, maybe. There we go. So the main thing I want to focus on in this tutorial is kind of the uh, buttons, because I do think they are the most important part of this tutorial. But for all intents and purposes, like say, I'm just adding a couple of varying um game objects here you can see what i'm doing is just kind of moving things into place there we go sorry i uh didn't mean to grab that there then um so we've just got like a black bar at top i mean you can follow this exactly if you want to again it is a hundred percent up to you click on game view you'll see how this looks uh and I think we've got to have the logo on there as well, haven't we? So let's get, let's get the logo on inside this section here. Uh, this is going to be kind of black, I guess. So we'll have that center. And you can see as I'm moving around, things are lining up perfectly. You see the blue line going down there means that's perfectly center. Let's have that as black. And now let's go to game object UI. Let's have the text. And let's actually couple that text into that raw image. Uh, let's zero out. Obviously, I think we need to pan the other side of the menu so we can see it. And let's have this in a bright red color. And let's have the font as the Bradley gratis one, I think. And we'll put uh, Wolf and Clone because I think I do name it as Wolf and Clone on my website. So we'll stick with that. Uh, let's center it as much as we can let's increase the size to i don't know 60 maybe and see how that looks yeah it's looking okay that'll do let's see how that looks there perfect okay so next thing we're going to do is create a little panel inside here where we're going to contain all of our important parts of this main menu so ui and let's go to panel let's have this panel dead center and i'm going to shrink the panel down to probably about there maybe how's that look yeah that, i think that looks okay uh, let's get it dead center so we can align everything there we go that is center there perfect and i'm going to change the color to black to give it a darker kind of impression there we go so i'm kind of liking how this is looking now so let's deal with our first button so game object ui and let's go to button 
Now these work in various different ways and you can, for example, do many, many different things with the button, but it is customizable to how you want it to be. So first thing we're going to do is rename the button to, uh, not, not create empty, I don't know why I was going to do that, rename to new button. So this is going to be, helps if I turn the caps lock off, <laughs> new button. So this button is specifically going to be to start a new game. And let's change the text on it to simply say new game. And I'm also going to change the font on it to this Unipix one. Increase the font size to probably about 26. Maybe more, to be honest. Let's go with, let's go with 40. And let's increase the button size as well, just so as we kind of cover every option there. So the button now has to go inside the panel and it's perfectly fine as it is anchored there. Uh, this panel obviously doesn't really mean anything, it's just a panel to contain everything that we have here. So next button, uh, in fact, no, do you know what? Let's modify this button first before we create any more buttons. So over here, we have a couple of different things. We have the image, which has the sprite on it, and the button itself. Normal color, we can change the color, as we can see there, no problem. And there are a couple of different things that you can play around with. So if we change the alpha all the way down to zero and press play, the button will look just like that. However, when we hover over it, we can see that it does indeed select. So that means that, for example, we can change the color of the text to be completely white. And let's change the highlighted color to be completely black. So now let's press play and see what this looks like. Cool. I like how that works. So when we go over it, we're able to see that we definitely have new game selected. So I'm going to go with that option. Obviously, you can play around with the press colors, the selected colors, disable colors. You can play around with the colors as much as you want. Play around the alpha if you want to. Uh, even play around with all of this here because you can change the actual um, shape of it. So if I click on knob there, Press play, and if we hover over new game, you can see that it changes how it looks. And like I said, it's entirely up to you how you want to go with that. I suggest just playing around, seeing what works best for you. You can create your own customizable ones if you want to, but if you're new to Unity and this is your first project, just go with what you've got. You'll learn as you go along, learn as you do new things. So next button, let's hold control, press D on that one, bring it down. And let's call this one new game, uh, sorry, load game. So load button. Now let's change the text to load game. And the next button down, let's have credits. So hold control, press D once again. We'll call it credit button. Let's get rid of that space. And let's change the text to say credits and bring the button down. So one thing I will say is when you're doing this, just be very, very careful you don't accidentally just bring the text down like that because you would leave the button in place there, but the text would be down here. So just be mindful when you're doing that and keep make sure you are moving the button. Uh, next one, let's hold control, press D. And I'm just going to have this one as a reset. So obviously, if you want to play the game and you want to reset your save, so reset button. Obviously all these buttons will be functional by the time we're finished with this tutorial series. Um, so reset game and finally let's have a quit button. So hold control, press D on the last one, bring it down to about there and quit button. And change that to just quit. So now let's press play and see what this looks like. So you can see how this main menu is actually coming together quite nicely now. Obviously these buttons don't actually do anything simply because we haven't made the script for them yet. Uh, but what I would recommend at this point is taking your time and building this main menu how you want it to be. You know, don't just go with what I've done. I've done a very, very quick and shoddy job of actually recreating what the menu looks like from the game. Um, but you should definitely take the time. I just kind of do things quickly to illustrate how it works, and then we can move on from there. So next thing, let's actually start coding the script for this main menu. So let's go to our scripts folder and right click, create. Let's create a new folder 
and we'll just call this one menu script. So anything that is within the game's menu, well, this, um, the credit scene, a splash screen that will eventually create, it all goes in this folder. So let's right click, create C sharp script, main menu control. So all of these buttons will be contained within this single script. So let's open that up in Visual Studio. So what we're going to focus on here are two of the buttons. We're going to focus on the new game button and we're also going to focus on the quit button. Those are the two buttons that we're going to work on until we have uh, more in the game to work on the other buttons. So how does all of this work? Well, it's actually real, real simple. It's still based on the scene management. So we need to add in using unity engine dot scene management semicolon. And while we're at it, let's actually save this scene. So file, save as, and let's save it in our scenes. And let's save this as main menu. And then let's go to file, build settings, and click on add open scenes. So main menu is now scene three. Perfect. So how do we actually get these buttons working? Well, it's not as simple as just writing a method for it. We have to make the method public, otherwise the button won't be able to kind of detect it. So to do that, we need to go public void. And this case, we, we can call this method anything we want. We'll just call it new game. Oh, close bracket, open curly bracket. So when we press this particular button, we want something to happen. So let's say we want uh, a sound to play, we want a fade screen to occur, and then we go into our scene. So for now, what we're going to do is declare a couple of variables. So public uh, audio source, and let's have this as click sound. And I'm just going to recycle our sound that we've already used within our game, just, just because. Uh, you can obviously bring in your own sound if you want to. And the next one is going to be public game object fade out semicolon. So new game is going to be based on the um, coroutine simply because we're going to use fade out after a certain amount of time. We go to a new scene. So we're going to have I enumerator and let's call it new game routine. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. And what we're going to do is have click sound dot play, open close bracket, semicolon, fade out dot set active, uh, in brackets true because we want it to come on, and then yield return new, wait for seconds, and then two, semicolon. After that, we can then say scene manager dot load scene and in brackets the scene we're going to load is always going to be in this case scene number one i think it is uh no uh, number two so we're always going to go to level zero zero one so it's going to be two in there and save so let's go back into unity and save this scene now we need to bring over the fade out from uh, the other scene. So let's head to our scenes. Let's open level 001. And we can cheat with this because we've already made the fade out. So we may as well uh, bring it over. So fade out, copy, head back to main menu, paste, and then make sure we drag it into the canvas. Now, game object, create empty, and we'll have this as menu controls. And then we just need to drag and drop that script that we just created onto there. Uh, let's add the fade out onto there. And uh, we need to make that click sound now. So what we'll do is we'll go onto main camera and we will create empty. We'll just have this as click sound. And what effect can we use? Um, tell you what, let's use pistol shot, but let's increase the pitch on it. So let's have the pitch set as three and see how that sounds. So then let's go to menu controls, click sound, drag onto there. Not that one. It's meant to be on that one right there, isn't it? Because that one was fade out. And let's save the scene and try this out.
Ah, see there, we've uh, had that set on awake, so we need to get rid of play on awake. So let's see how this goes. Ah, I've done this many times in the past, many, many times. Those of you who follow me for many years have probably seen me do this many times. I don't know what it is about me and buttons. I always forget to actually assign the script to the button. Yep, it's a classic Jimmy moment. So on the button itself, the new button, I, should, oh, I need to bash myself in the head for that one. Uh, on the button itself, we need to go over here where it says on click, list is empty, click on the plus. Drag and drop menu controls into that little section there and you'll see no function light up. Change it to main menu control and then we need to select new game. Now we can press play and now we can try out new game. And it's still not working. Why is it not working? I'm really having a bad day. Because we didn't assign the coroutine. Of course we didn't. Start coroutine. That's two in one tutorial. Please leave a dislike for that bit. <laughs> start start coroutine. New game routine. Oh, close bracket. Close bracket. Semicolon and save. And I'm hoping, I am hoping all of you guys watching this were shouting out, Jimmy, you forgot that. Jimmy, you didn't do that right. All of that meant to happen. I was just testing you. Third time lucky. Third time's the charm. Perfect. So we now have that button functioning correctly. The last thing we're going to do is write the one for quit. And obviously we want that to quit out of the game. So to do that, let's go public void quit game. Oh, close bracket, open curly bracket. And all we do is application dot quit. Oh, close bracket, semicolon and save. Then just apply that script to the quit button. So on there, we just need to click on plus, drag and drop menu controls, click on no function, click on there and quit game. Save the scene. Now, when we press the quit button here, it won't actually quit. Uh, the reason being is because we're trying to quit the application, not the engine. So if we press it, nothing will happen. However, if we were actually running this game for real as an application, it would indeed quit. So we don't need to worry about that not working for now. I will show you that working at some point in this tutorial series when we uh, build the game to play and test. So we've got our main menu working. That's all good. Things are linking. Uh, I'm going to make sure I've definitely saved that scene and head back to uh, our original scene of floor 001. Zoom into something so we can see it. So next tutorial, we are going to fix the bugs we have. So we're going to deal with uh, the red still on the screen when we get shot, the gun going into walls. So we'll deal with layers for that one. And if we have time, we may even start looking at a splash screen. Yep, a splash screen is where we basically have our studio logo or whatever logo you want on the screen before the main menu. Like, for example, in Resident Evil games, Capcom pops up. In Final Fantasy games, Square Enix pops up. So that's the splash screen. We'll be doing that if we have time. Until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.